so Nintendo's releasing Zelda Majora's Mask on a 3DS. Now, this is old news, I know, but I felt like talking about the things we know so far about it, we still don't have a release date on it, and we don't know exactly how different it'll be from the original game, so I just felt like collecting the information we already know and giving my take on some of the rumors and some of the things we heard in the interviews. Now, I'm sure you would probably want to hear me talk about The Legend of Zelda for the Wii U, as it's probably more exciting thing, but seeing how Majora's Mask is a lot closer, right around, it's pretty much right around the corner, I feel it's more relevant right now. So, without any further ado, let's go through the list of things we know already and I'll give my take on it, like I said. So, the first thing, we're gonna get better graphics for the game. There's not much I can say there. It surprises me, though, that the game took, like, four years. People keep saying three years, but no, it's four. Four years. It, it, at the release of the game, it's going to be four years. Yeah, I know they don't release the game like right after it's finished and stuff, so there's a lot of preparation and advertising and stuff. But anyways, okay, sure, f three years, three years. But still, like, the original Majora's Mask took just over a year to make, so it's a bit weird that it takes so much longer to remake it. Well, I'm not a developer at Nintendo, I don't know how this stuff works. We kind of know that Majora's Mask has had a little bit of problems being ported in the past. Majora's Mask did make an appearance on GameCube in Collector's Edition, but it was kind of laggy and kind of crap. So, by what I've heard, it was emulated on that system. So, if you play Majora's Mask on the GameCube, you notice when you start off the game, there's a long text about how the game might not run as it should. And those issues were not with Ocarina of Time. So, there are reasons to worry about Majora's Mask, maybe not maybe not performing as well as it should, but seeing how long they've taken to port this game over, we should hope that this is a faithful port that should run well. And honestly, like, the GameCube version wasn't that bad. It crashed every now and then, it had a significantly worse frame rate, but nothing game-breaking. So with the better graphics, I would assume it wouldn't take that long, seeing how most of the models in Majora's Mask were taken directly from Ocarina of Time, but then again, I'm not developer at Nintendo, I do not know how it works. Now, by what I've heard, or it's been hinted to that they're going to change, the saving in the game. Which I think it's great, because I didn't like the saving in Majora's Mask. It wasn't good. I, I mean, I really can't see anyone defending it. It wasn't good at all. So, the way that it worked in Majora's Mask, and I'm going to kind of tell how I think it's going to work in this new version. In Majora's Mask, you had two kinds of ways to save. You could make a hard save or a temporary owl save by talking to a um, by talking to an owl. <laughs> and you make a quick save right there. And then if you turn on the game off, you lose that save and you go back to your hard save, back to the first day. So that save you can do any time by playing the Song of Time. You lose everything and you go back to the start. You only have your quest items, but not your arrows and rupees and stuff. So, I guess, first of all, technical limitations made the saving crap, and secondly, I suppose, to prevent cheating, to prevent people from buying time to turn the game off and come back to the, the owl. So, things they can do to improve the saving. First of all, don't delete the game if you turn the game off. This is on handheld now, it's, it can suddenly just run out of battery. It, it was a stupid idea to begin with, but don't have us lose a lot of progress by turning the game off. I know it was kind of to prevent cheating, but... Come on, you can do better. So another thing, they should add a quick state. They should, there really should be an ability to just hit start and save the game like every other game. I think it was a big mistake to have you talk to an owl. I get that it's like a quick save that you, that you reappear in that place, but they can make it better. Instead of having to play the Song of Soaring to leave the temple, then play it again to get to an owl statue and then save, they can just have you well, press a button to save and then show up at the closest I'll set you when loading the game. <laughs> it's that simple. Also, you weren't. It was impossible to save at the start of the game before getting your mask off. And also, like once you entered the moon in the final part of the game, there's no way to save there either. So it's like, I mean, if you die, you need to re. If you die during the last boss and you have to restock on fairies, you can't leave the place. You have to turn the game off. And if you didn't play the Song of Time after beating the last Twin Mold boss, you have to do the entire final temple all over again. It's it's kind of broken. It, it's, it is very broken. It kind of ruins the experience. A lot of the times I've 
played through Majora's Mask, I got so extremely frustrated at the final part of the game that I've just quit. So, like, I've beaten the game two times, but i played through it, like, dozens of times. I just <laughs> never feel like doing the final boss because I really don't like it. And also the second final one, the twin mole boss, is also not very good. But more on that later. So they're adding fishing ponds. Makes me kind of wonder where the priorities are going here. Um, but it kind of just makes me think that they're going to really go really, really deep with this game. Like of all the things they would add, why would they add fishing ponds? It makes me think they might add temples, maybe make the inside of the moon a little more exciting. But okay, like fishing ponds are cool. So they're changing one boss in the game. I heard. Nobody knows which one. There are five bosses in the game, or four, I suppose. Like, or four, there are four dungeon bosses in the game. Some suppose it could be Georg, who will be chained because it's a bit tricky, it's a bit difficult. I don't find it difficult, so I'm not sure if it's gonna be that one. Some say it's Goth, Goth, or however you, however you pronounce it. I like that boss. I, I freaking love it. It's a bit difficult, but I really don't think they should change that one. The boss I think they should change is Twin Mold. Twin Mold sucks. Twin Mold is not a good boss. First of all, the there's no reason why they require you to use the giant mask in the state. It makes it easier, but if they they were going to have you fight a character with a giant mask, it should have been the first boss in the game because that's a humanoid boss to like match the size of a humanoid. That would be that would work, but not when you're fighting giant snakes. It's like I don't get why they have to have it like that. The twin mold is two flying snakes and it has no moves. It just has a gigantic health bar. They have a gigantic health bar. They take forever to kill and there is no progression. If you think back to the fire, the the other, if you think back to every other snake boss, flying snake, because there's always been one in every Zelda game, even back to A Link to the Past, there's always been one. They are, you know, they have progression. They have stuff's happening. Twin mold. There's nothing about it. I like the design of Twin Mold. I think it's one of the coolest bosses in Zelda ever. I even have a mask of it. But it's not a fun boss to fight. It's not. And like you, and if you run out of magic power and turn small, there's no way to get more of it. Because you have to keep like hitting those rocks. So you just gotta hope that Twin Mold hits the rocks and gives you green power. If you don't find any green power, you are fucked. You are completely fucked. So if there's one boss they need to change, it's that one. So next up, they are adding new features uh, for the new 3DS. And people are speculating what it could be. It could be amiibo functionality. It could be extra dungeons. It could be something else. I'm going to assume it's camera control. Okay, the new 3DS has a second analog stick. I think that is to me the most exciting new thing that this one has. Being able to move the camera. It's not confirmed that you can do that, but if you could move the camera individually with the right stick, it would make the game a lot better. It would highly improve it. There is a reason why Twilight Princess is best on GameCube. There, you can move the camera. I mean, it, it, it really, really adds a big difference. Like of all the Mario games, Sunshine has the best camera control because of the second stick. It, it's like, it just feels so good. Wind Waker. Great, I, I love the camera control, that. it just, it makes everything so much better. Now I know it could be a bit difficult to optimize, to make, I don't know, like, collision detection with the camera, the dodging. I guess a lot of stuff would have to be recoded to make the camera movable and like, zoomable and stuff. It could, it could be difficult to program that, or at least just horizontal movement like Twilight Princess had. Or like just two different uh, zooms. But it, it could be difficult to program that. But hey, it's been three years. Four years. So I really think they should make it. I mean, there are more exciting things they could have added. They can add a temple. That would be cool. But not exclusively to the new 3DS. I don't see any reason for that. But yeah, that's basically what I think. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be great. Regardless of what they're doing. I think it's a bit of a stretch thinking they're going to add camera control. But... Or a, or a whole new dungeon, for that matter. But we can always hope. I think it's going to be fun to see what they do with it.